Okay, so video controls I'm sure you've seen before that have the full screen options. So you click on them, they go to full screen. We have now in the browsers the ability to programmatically switch from regular size to full screen. And we can do it not just with videos, but with any HTML element. On my page here, I've got an H1 tag, a video tag, and an audio tag. I can set any one of those to be full screen. So take up the full space. Uh, I have a class here in my CSS called Big with background green, text color white. Uh, I'm applying that to any of these elements when they go large. Now, it's not going to have much of an effect on the audio video, but for the H1 tag, it'll put a green background with the white text. So when it's full, it changes the appearance. Now, one restriction on this um, right now is with my software. If I go into full screen mode and then I try to exit, it kills the recording. So I cannot record this, but I've included a screenshot for the first heading. So when we get to that point, I'm going to show that on the screen. The other restriction is the fact that there are so many prefixed versions of this. Now I've got the link included here for this page right here. There's a section on the page called prefixing. Here are the standard properties. These are the ones that are part of the standard for going full screen. Uh, full screen enabled means that the browser uh, is capable of doing it. Full screen element means this is the element which is currently put into full screen mode. If it's null, it means that nothing right now is in full screen mode. We have the on full screen change and on full, full screen error. These are the two events that we can listen for. Exit full screen is when you're in full screen mode, you can programmatically go back to the regular. And last but definitely not least is the element method. So any element, H1, video, audio, anything in your HTML, if you call request full screen on that, it will put it into full screen mode. Now all these prefixed versions, you can see Blink, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Edge, and Safari WebKit. There are different prefixed versions for each of these. Now that means that in your JavaScript, you are going to have to handle all these different possibilities, which is a bit of a pain. I've done one of them. I did the on full screen change, and I wrote a, a test to see which one of the prefixed versions was supported in my browser. Everything else I'm doing in this code sample that I've got right here, I've used the Blink Chrome ones. So if you're testing this, I've got the code gist linked in the description. You can download that and run it in Chrome and you'll see all of this functioning. So even though my video can't, won't let me switch back and forth between full screen and regular screen, you will be able to on your own computer. So my test, what I'm doing here is a nested ternary operator. I am checking to see, does the document object have a property called on WebKit full screen change? If it does, then this string gets assigned to the variable fs change. If it doesn't, then I'm checking for this one. Does the document object have this property? If it does, assign this string to this property. If it doesn't, check for this, assign this. If it doesn't, check this, do this. At the very end of it, if it doesn't have any of these, any of these document properties, null is what gets assigned to here, and I'm testing for null. If it's not null, I'm going to assign this as in the event listener. This function will be called when on WebKit full screen change, when that event happens to the document object, my function called toggle full is going to run. Okay, so a little bit of boilerplate code here. I'm looking for the H1, the video, the audio elements. I'm adding click listeners to all three and double click listeners for all three. So I can click once to go to the big version, the full screen version, and then double click to go back to the regular version. So I can toggle between those for each one of them. The function for big, well, I'm just getting whatever was clicked and that's the element right there. Then I'm going to check to see, does the browser currently have a full screen element? So I've got the negation operator here. I'm checking to see does this have something that is set to full screen? If not, this property will be null. So if it's not null, then I'm going to, or rather, if it is null, I'm going to check to see if my element, my H1, my video, my audio, if they have a property called WebKit request full screen. If it does, call it. That right there, that is the one line of code that is going to 
make the browser change and whatever I clicked, if it was the H1, this will then become the full screen element. Otherwise, I'm just writing out some messages about, okay, here's the current full screen element because there was one already selected or there's a problem and it cannot be full screened. So I don't have this property in my browser. Go home. What I'm doing is the reverse. I am going back. Uh, I'm getting the thing that was double clicked. I'm removing the CSS class big. I'm checking to see if full screen enabled. So does my browser support this? Yes. Okay, great. Call the exit full screen method. That takes me back to the regular size. So double click takes you back to the regular size. Toggle full. This is the one that's called on the event. Now I'm doing this line of code in two places. When you double click to go back to the big screen, I'm removing the CSS class big, but I'm also removing it if the person hits escape or F11 to go back to the regular size, I still need to remove this class. So toggle full, that's my event listener for that event. Checking to get the full screen element. So that should be the thing that was displayed in full screen mode when the person hits escape. I'm taking that, if that exists, we're adding the class big, if it doesn't exist, that means the person hit escape to exit from full screen mode. So this is our test to see whether or not we're going to or coming from full screen mode. If this is null, it means we don't have a full screen element anymore. So let's look for any one of those three elements that have the class big and remove it. So this is our workaround for if the person doesn't double click, if they hit escape or F1, whatever the native um, key is for going back to regular size from full screen, then this is how we remove the class because we don't want it left on here afterwards. Okay, so that's it. That is the full screen. Really the biggest change, uh, the biggest challenge rather, is testing for all the prefixed versions. Once you get that done, it's not that difficult. You have really just this handful. Full screen element. What is the thing that's in full screen mode? That's either null or it points to an element. Request full screen is the method that takes you to full screen and then document exit full screen exits. Those three things, that is really the crux of this whole thing. That's the core of what we're trying to do here. All right, so I will leave this code snippet, which includes this link to the prefixed versions down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.